On December 21st, it was announced that the manga of the Ancient Magus Bride, which is a phenomenal story with an amazing anime by the way, you should go watch it, would be returning from a hiatus. What shocked many, however, is that it is returning with an English simulcast, which would be translated by AI. This news has made several localizers really upset. If you don't know what a localizer is, they are the people who take the Japanese and translate it into English so people can understand it. Or at least that's what they should do. They're being put out of a job by AI, and they say that AI cannot possibly do a good job with their translations because of the cultural nuances that take place. We've discussed AI in this channel a couple of times now, both from a positive and negative viewpoint. Do these localizers have a point? Should their jobs be secured because of their ability to properly translate Japanese to an English audience? Using direct examples from their work, contrasting it with amateur translators and their own words and opinions on the nature of localization, I hope to show everyone not only why it's a good thing that these localizers are being booted, but why you should cheer it on and hope that more people like them don't ever work in any anime industry again. You think I'm being too harsh? Okay then, let's begin. But before that, a quick primer on my own personal knowledge and experience with language. I'm already one who speaks two languages, with English being my second language and Bulgarian being my first. I've come across many times points in which cross-cultural sayings and words don't translate from one culture to another. I've made plenty of mistakes in the past of saying things in English that make no sense, but make sense in Bulgarian. Outside of that, on two occasions I've sat down to learn Mandarin, a third language very similar to Japanese. Both times lessons had to be cut short due to time constraints, and I will more than likely try again this upcoming year, as learning Mandarin and Japanese are very important not from a we perspective, but a business and even religious perspective. So my studies are not about merely reading subtitles, but of understanding the language down to its core. Aside from that, I currently read many books that have been translated from Japanese or Mandarin that come with a mountain of footnotes that explain to me the cultural nuances of the language and how certain translations may be difficult. This picture on screen is from the notes section of the book Miyamoto Musashi, His Life and Writings, more specifically the translation of the Golden No Show, Book of Five Rings. And this one is my personal favorite translation of the three that I have of this book. My point in bringing all of this up is that I am personally well aware of the various nuances of language translation, enough so that I can spot when someone is trying to use the concept of nuance as a shield to hide behind an incompetency. The funny thing is, even if I didn't have this background, it wouldn't have mattered, as you are about to see. The translations are just that bad. Let's take a look at one of the translators that are upset over this. Miss Katrina, hashtag human translator. What do you have to say about it? I don't have words for how embarrassing and disappointing this is. Instead of paying a human to do a quality job, they're using AI to get a mediocre product for free. Is this how little they think of English speaking audiences? Of translation? For shame. Machine translation isn't smart to handle the audiovisual work like TV, movie, anime, manga, etc. Audiovisual translators are already criminally underpaid, both due to the intrusion of machine translation in the field as a whole and the demand to work in the entertainment industry. At least show your fans and creators more respect by giving them a human translation. I really wonder if creators know just how badly AI slash MT mangles the words they've crafted. Authors spend so long making sure the dialogue and narrative are written just so. You want to trust Google Translate to handle your prose? Is that how you want your audience to know you? Boy, Katrina, those are some pretty strong, emotional words coming from the human translator. Using words like respect, talking about how AI mangles words. Let's take a look at some of the work Miss Katrina has done. Scratch point over on Twitter bringing some receipts, says localizers suddenly pretend to care about the creator's words being mangled by machine translation, but their resumes consist of bragging about the rewrites they get away with. It's not about respect, they want to maintain a stranglehold on the translations. First screenshot, a colleague of Katrina says, The one time I saw a fat joke about a young female character that was thin by western standards, I changed it to a joke about her poor taste in wardrobe. It was for a volunteer project, so nobody noticed. Katrina responds, 10 out of 10 localization. If the joke was just to show she's awkward and nobody likes her, perfect. No need to keep that stuff in. Next, from an anime named Horimiya, she translates a text as, I don't mean to kink shame, but... Somebody else in the comments points out, Oh, now they suddenly care about accuracy? I don't know the context, but... The Japanese words. In my mind, I translate to, What kind of play is this? How does that translate to kink shaming? Even ignoring all the current today words and internet meme inserts half the time, the subs are not matching what they are saying on screen. 
they are changing contexts and meanings of their own. No wonder they think AI can do a better job than these people. These people reap what they sow. And finally for her, I am unfortunately doing some of my finest localization work on the anime about the high school girl who was legitimately sexually attracted to a corgi. In the shots we got four examples. I'm sorry I yeeted you, okay? And the other time, I'd love to be all up in her dress. Nekutani looks like she needs eye bleach. And here I thought you'd have resting bitch face for the rest of your life. Let's look at some more examples of localizers doing a piss poor job. Nagatoro using the word sus, a niche internet slang for people who played Among Us. The reason why this and all the previous examples mattered. Let's say I want to show a friend an old anime that takes place in a high school, like Azumanga Daio or School Rumble. Those shows are two decades old at this point, and I don't want you to have to stop episodes in order to explain the internet lingo of the time. Unfortunately, this modern day lingo exists in the dubs as well. You made me feel weak, like there was nothing I could do! But now I'm gonna make you eat those feelings like a teen doing the Tide Pod Challenge! Boom! Take this! We're not done yet. Let's look at some more examples of localizers. We have the classic example in Dragon Maid, where in the subs, Lukua says, Everyone was always saying something to me, so I tried toning down the exposure. How was it? Toru responds, you should try changing your body next. So what did the dub do? Oh, those pesky, patriarchal, societal demands are getting on my nerves, so I changed clothes. Give it a week, they'll be begging you to change back. Complete shift in the tone. This one's particularly obnoxious. So in the top two screens, you have Kana making a bunch of dragon noises, I guess. And she says, that's dragon for I love you. What the actual translation should be is, I'm happy that we'll be together forever. I'm really happy. Again, a complete shift in tone from silly to wholesome and sentimental. I love it for any localizer defenders out there to explain to me why that translation is acceptable. The image is big and blurry, but it really doesn't matter for this one. I'll quickly explain what's going on on the left side. It's the Japanese translation. The two are assassins of former enemies now uniting having a conversation about how they came to be in the position and how many they've killed, and how having all that blood in their hands affects them, before agreeing to work together to protect each other's lord. What does the American localization decide to do? They decide to be cute and not translate any of it. Just leave dots implying they don't say anything to each other. Things like this fundamentally change a character. I don't even know if they were going for comic relief or if they were just too lazy to translate all of that. Seven Seas apologizes for intentional English mistranslation of I think I turned my childhood friend into a girl. Promises to revise scripts to more accurately reflect the author's original intent. In this shot, in the manga translation on the right, the MC asks if he gave his bizarre take on fashion to a pro model. On the left, they throw in modern day feminist BS and have him say mansplaining. Even in the context of what mansplaining is, he wasn't doing that, but they just had to throw it in there. One more prime example, fan translation. Against me as I am now, a foolish old man would lose quickly, simply, and completely. Machine translation. I can easily, quickly, and thoroughly defeat a stupid old man. Localization. Underestimate me, and I'll thrash you before you can say adult diaper. You dour-faced fart factory. That'll leave you with plenty of time to make it to senior discount night at the country buffet. So out of those three, which one would you say is the worst? Let's move away from the direct examples for now and turn our attention to what the people in the industry have to say about the respect for the language, culture, and works that they translate. I've had to take matters into my own hands with some pretty sexist jokes, not even coming from villains or characters already set up as terrible, and I don't regret it. A lot of text is written by 50 year old men and you get some dust in there, it helps no one to keep it. Coming across super blatant racism, sexism in LOC work is interesting because it's half oh my god and half oh thank god I can fix this. Someone says, eventually you people attached to the localization industry in the west will have to answer why you're deliberately cultivating these echo chambers onto the whole community, doxing anyone with opinions you don't agree with while adding your own politics into a narrative in post. Someone replies, lol, no we won't. Just translated something as incels and I couldn't be prouder. And yes, politically correct is a verb that describes how SJWs improve translations. I look forward to a day we can just leave everything in Japanese and still cash a paycheck. Translators are 100% writers. 
I always try to slip a few mentions of Gamergate into my translations. I think once I start getting on anime production committees, hopefully sometime soon, I've got a couple of things in the works, I'll do the medium a lot of good as a whole, wrestle it away from sexists like you and give it to the marginalized people who deserve it. You can say that, but you're not the one running two of the biggest English language anime sites, consulting at Crunchyroll, or making sure problematic figures are eliminated from the industry. I don't even like anime that much and I have more power than you. Well, you know, Japan is super racist, sexist, homophobic, fatphobic, and... Pretty much everything else. They rank 110 out of 144 countries in terms of gender equality. Japan gonna Japan. Hi, I'm Rich. I work at Nintendo, making Japanese games be English, but I don't speak Japanese, I just do the writing. I don't translate anything, but I will happily pretend I do and then make things up. The true joy of localization really is seeing what you can get away with. Something I wish people understood was the difference between censorship and editorial. When editorial makes a decision to alter something because they think it will sell better, that's not censorship, that's capitalism. I know I'm opening a huge can of worms, but here goes. As translators, what is the right way to handle offensive content? Who determines what gets left in and what gets censored? A long thread about translation theory, ethics and localization, and capitalism. <sighs> Now that I've gone through all of that, hopefully you can see why I smile at the thought of these people losing their jobs. They disrespect the culture, disrespect the source material, shoehorn in their own politics, and insult anyone who just wants a decent and accurate translation. There are both seen and unseen problems with AI, both in terms of potential quality issues and job issues. But in this particular situation, None of that matters. I want all of these people fired. And if AI is the way to get them fired, I will take it. People can clean up poor translations from AI. And like many have for the past several decades, trust fan translations more than these people. It should come as no surprise, but I do love me some anime. Even when everyone told me no, I based half my business identity on anime. So I do take what these people are doing very personally. What business, you might ask? For over 8 years now, my anime-themed tea store visit my website, The Dragon's Treasure, for some anime-themed tea goodness. We sell loose leaf and pre-bagged teas and coffee, with fully-fledged waifus attached. It's the best way to support videos like this, and people like me hope to one day use the powers of capitalism, combined with autism, to fix the American anime industries with aggressive buyouts, hostile takeovers, and mass layoffs. But that can only happen with your help. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.